Welcome inside the McLeod Center in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Final day of the regular season in the Missouri Valley. Illinois State in their road reds, Northern Iowa. Home white, trimmed in purple and gold. Brent Stover and Bob Wenzel courtside, that's Harris Lee. Misfiring on a three for Illinois State. They trail by one. Good start offensively for both sides. Wichita State has already beaten Missouri State, so they have clinched at least a share of the regular season title in the Missouri Valley here on the final day of the regular season. If Illinois State wins this game, they get the other part of that regular season title. So a ton on the line as the Redbirds can finish 17 and 1. 24 27 wins i mean if they make it to the finals of the missouri valley championship in st louis next week they should both be in turnaround jumper jeremy morgan won't fall northern iowa meantime kind of quietly has had a nice turnaround campaign they started 0-5 in the valley then reeled off five straight in fact they had a run of nine of ten wins before two straight losses before this game but the dust has settled, and here the Panthers are after a disastrous non-conference and start to the conference schedule. And they are 9-8 and eight in the Valley, and again, will get a top-four seed in the Valley Tournament in St. Louis next weekend. So far in this game, Jordan Ashton has six points, and McIntosh has six points on the other side. Three-point shots for Ashton. McIntosh has made steals and is scoring close in. Deontay Hawkins close in, lays one home, and Illinois State goes in front by one. Nice pass by Enjai. Seven-footer, thin, number four in the middle of the zone. Jeremy Morgan has it slapped by Lee, kept alive, and a dunk for Ted Friedman. How about the backup getting in the action on the dunk side? 14-13 Panthers as we approach the midpoint of this first half from the McLeod Center in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Deontay Hawkins, number 23, lead scorer and rebounder for the Redbirds. That's him on the weak side. Keyshawn Evans misfired on a three, corralled by Illinois State, and Paris Lee banks one in from outside. I'm not sure that should count. <laughs> oh, Paris, I know he's one of your favorite players, not just in this conference, but in the entire country. Love the way he steals the ball. They're in zone right now. And Luke McDonald gets absolutely hammered in the corner that time by Deontay Hawkins. You can bank it from the side, but banking it from out front, yikes. You gotta call those, you know? Yeah, he might have. It's loud in here. Uh, McDonald, the bench, Friedman, and Rhodes as well. The good Ryan news is going deep into their bench early well, on. In that's, this game. that's exactly right. And the, and the good news for them is they've been able to go deep into the bench and still maintain their position right now in the game. They have struggled offensively a lot this year. And for them getting off a good start like this, that's big. Here's Jawan McLeod for Northern Iowa. Spencer Haldeman, good three-point shooter off the bench right here. Redshirt freshman. Haldeman's got it, 10 to shoot, releases on a three, too strong. And an offensive rebound by Jordan Ashton. And back to Juwan McLeod. Bennett Cook inside. Kicks for McLeod. Shot clock at 18. Jordan Ashton. High post, Clint Carlson. Called him in again. Got it. One for two. That's his thing. Unlimited range. Shoots a stab. He's 32% on threes for the season. Averages seven and a half points per game. It's a one point Northern Iowa advantage. Great double team. Tony Wills out front, off the bounce. Wills banks it home. Back and forth we go. Wills played great in their last game. Defense is his calling card. Here's Haldeman for the Panthers, and now Ashton. Clint Carlson draws the double. Fall away, Carlson rattles out, foul on Cook over the back. 
8.06 in the first half, Illinois State by one. The inside out three. Beautiful pass by Carlson. And at the other end, out of the double team. Penetration into the lane by Wills, using the glass properly. That's Terrific player, this guy. Dan Muller, fifth season now as a head coach. You mentioned a couple of trips to the NCAA tournament. He was the hero to get him an NCAA tournament win one year, a couple of NITs, and now comes back to become the head coach, and he's already 100 wins. And Paris Lee with an air ball for his team. For those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will conclude after in disastrous fashion a and and a and m lost, he had 37. So as good as he's been defensively in his entire career, really has become a great scorer down near the end. They need him to score with this particular group this year. Last year, he was a blend scorer, even though he scored plenty of points. They had Washburn and Jesperson. And a takeaway. Tony Wills, so good defensively for Illinois State, gets tripped on the way. And the head coach here in Northern Iowa is Ben Jacobson. 14 and 14, 9 and 8 in the conference. They had won 9 of 10 before two straight losses. Of course, one of those was Wichita State entering this final day of the regular season. NCAA tournament. 09, 10, 15, 16, and winning in the NCAA tournament as well. Over the back foul on that rebound. And that's the second on Deontay Hawkins. The well, part of the reason that you and I is in this game is Deontay Hawkins has been absent from the scoring pretty much in this game, and he's their lead scorer and lead rebounder. 6'9", 220, inside, outside guy. I like the pressure. I think this is wise on the part of Muller. Timeout, Jordan Ashton. Two outstanding defenses. Top ten in the country in key categories for the Redbirds, who lead by one. 724 first half. Consider that Coach Jacobson's team was 0-5 to start Valley play, and a win today will make them finish at 10-8. and 8. That's pretty remarkable. I think there's some history in the fact that if they win today, they will be the first team ever in the Missouri Valley to go 0-5 and, and then finish third in the league. 9-3 and three since that 0-5. Pretty remarkable. They've turned it around because of Jeremy Morgan, and their offense has been reasonable, but the defense has been much, much better. Bennett Cook can't finish underneath and rebounded by the Redbirds, D.J. Clayton. Here comes Illinois State up by 1-7 to play first half. A win today for Illinois State, and they get a share of the Missouri Valley regular season title with Wichita State. The Shockers have already beaten Missouri State to clinch at least a share of that title. The shot knocked down by Mikhail McIntosh, and the lead is three. Illinois State has not won a regular season conference title in nearly two decades. A win today would be their 25th, the most they've ever had in a regular season in school history. So a ton on the line for McIntosh and company. He drills another one, this one from long range. McIntosh two in a row. Best player on the team earlier in the year. Redbirds 17 and 1 in their last 18 games. One loss in all of January and February. They are used to winning, but the pressure is on now. They know Wichita State has won. They know they gotta win this one to top. And they've never won in this building as Clint Carlson drills a three. 0 oh and 10 at the McLeod Center. In fact. Even before the McLeod Center, they've lost 12 straights here in Cedar Falls. And these players for Illinois State are well aware. Offensive foul on Phil Thane. What a first half. 23-20, five and a half left in this first half. Redbirds on the move. McIntosh goes down, but hits it anyway. At the other end, the home team. Nice fake by Carlson. Nice rebound inside. It doing damage against the zone. And now a foul on Tony Wills. And a pressure defense being applied early by the Redbirds. We've seen man-to-man. -man. 
We've seen 2-3 zone. We've seen 2-2-1 press. And Will's involved in all of those things because he and Paris lead together for Muller. That is a dynamic defensive duo out front. Here's Jordan Ashton for Northern Iowa. Out front, Jeremy Morgan. And now Hunter Rhodes, who rarely plays, is in for the second time already in this game. Plays about nine minutes a game. Carlson in and out on three and tracked down by Paris Lee. McIntosh has been the man so far in this game. McIntosh a push off here as he tries the fall away shot. And that's his first. I don't know about that. 6'8", 230. Knee surgery three weeks ago. Back playing after two weeks. You got to admire his guts. Two weeks. Amazing. Amazing. February 1st, he has a surgery. He's back in the 14th. Unbelievable. Torn meniscus. Rhodes from Morgan. And now Ashton. Bennett Cook draws the double. Hunter Rhodes with 10 to shoot. Ashton in rhythm. You pack. Making threes. Formula for the upset. Phil Thane the finish. On made baskets, Redbirds going 2 2 1 pressure. Back into the zone. I think they're better off playing man to man. The zone is allowing some open threes. Guy like Rhodes gets in the game against zone. That's his thing. Carlson on Thane. Out to Morgan. Whip it around for Rhodes on a three. Spins out this time. Out of bounds. It'll stay at this end. And that leads us to the under. Got belted under the left eye on that last play on the rebound. No foul call. No ill intent. So uh, he is in there. He is one tough guy. Rhodes with the ball is in because they're playing zone. Now they are playing man to man. And if they do, he'll be out. Question is, who's guarding Morgan? Morgan slipped free, but an offensive foul on the screen on Bennett Cook. Yeah, Cook moved. No doubt about that. He's saying that he was held, but to no avail. Cook at 6'10 sets, sets a pretty good screen. That's his second foul. He averages 11 points. Illinois State by two. Late moments of his first half, Fane got in the air, and he's fouled by the combination of Cook and Ashton. They get Cook for it, Bob, and that is his no. No, no, no. They've changed it to Ashton, and it's Ashton's second. Redbirds running the pick and roll effectively with Fane the last several possessions. Right now, I like what Muller has done. He's got two point guards in the game at the same time. Paris Lee and Keyshawn Evans. Evans is number three. And when McIntosh was out, Evans became the starter, played a lot of minutes. Then when McIntosh came back, he went back to his old role. And that gave Dan Muller some problems because they've been very up and down offensively since the return of McIntosh, trying to find the proper chemistry again since he's been back. He talked about it. Basketball, really more than any other sport, can be affected. Yeah, a guy gets in and he's playing 25 minutes and then they, uh, somebody comes back. Now he's playing 10 minutes. Big change. Already seven lead changes. Morgan can't change it again. Too short on a three-point try. Now Paris Lee he leads the conference and steals it to a game. Leads and assists as well at 5.1. Keyshawn Evans gets buried in the corner. Errant pass and Clayton can't get there. UNI has doubled anytime the ball is on the sideline or the baseline. That has been very effective for them so far. And when Hawkins was in the game, they double teamed him as well. Nice defensive strategy by Ben. So much on the line for Illinois State. Not just to share this first regular season title in 19 years. But they are squarely on the NCAA tournament bubble and can't afford a loss here today. No doubt about that. Then it puts all the pressure on them to have to win the Missouri Valley Tournament in St. Louis. And that would probably mean beating Wichita State as Carl.
Wilson scores in the lane, and we are deadlocked at 25. He got away with a little push with his right arm right there. Nothing wrong with that. Paris See the double lead. team again? Anytime it's near the sideline, they're going to go that way. DJ Clayton works on Ashton. Lee on a road, shot clock under 10, game clock nearing two minutes. Lee with five. Keyshawn Evans with three. Baseline on Morgan Wild, shot wouldn't go. No iron, and it's back the other way. Defense is in the house for the Panthers. Watch the double team on your right. He goes and they bury him in the deep corner. Result, turnover. Then at the other end, watch the right arm push off here. Gets away with it. Nice little play by Carlson in the lane. Northern Iowa is playing very, very well right now. Identical shooting, 10 of 23, both teams. Ted locked on the scoreboard, takeaway by the leading steals man of the Valley, Paris Lee scores and then might have tweaked his ankle on the way down. Steal number 61, he's got two in this game so far. He becomes less of a weapon when they play zone. In man, he is a dynamic weapon defensively. He's on Ashton, giving away about four inches right now. Harris Lee is everywhere. Wills defends on Morgan. Spins and left it short. Rebound by Lee with a minute to play in his first half. Good defense by Paris Lee and Wills. Paris Lee on the steal gets a flat tire. Watch him as he goes in here. His right leg gets a, uh, his problem is that his knee locks when he pushes off. You can see he's in a little bit of pain there, but since then, he's been after it. That foul, by the way, on David Injai, a reserve postman, number four for Illinois State. Here comes Morgan, and he gets pushed by Wills. Coming up on at and at the half, Adam Zucker, Swin Cash, John Rothstein, plus first-half highlights and stats. Final day of the regular season here in the Valley, and for some of the smaller conferences, getting down to the nitty-gritty, regardless of what conference you're talking about. Some massive ACC games early on today around the country. So Zucker and, uh, and Cash and Rothstein in New York at the break. And here on CBS Sports Now, you have Marquette Providence, two teams in the bubble. They play next. We got Nevada later on. They're right on the bubble as well. A couple of Mountain West games at 6 Eastern and 8 Eastern that will uh, go a long way in deciding the Mountain West regular season title. Mountain West looks like a one-bit league this season. Paris Lee misfires, rebounded by Clint Carlson. Final 25 seconds, nine second difference, game and shot. Ashton got his man in the air, left it short, tapped it around, but controlled by Injai. Shot clock off, Illinois State's ball, 15 seconds. Lee with four seconds, Keyshawn Evans buries it three in the closing seconds. And the baseball heave is off, and that's how it ends. Eight execution in the end game. And there is McIntosh. You mentioned the 11 points on five of six. From the field, the lead all scores. Ashton leads Northern Iowa with nine. I'm looking for Morgan to get much more involved. He's one of six from the field. I thought he was settling a little too much for outside shots in the first half. He with the basketball right here, pulling on his jersey. He needs to get some screens and get open and have an advantage and drive it to the basket. They are switching everything on Morgan. McIntosh on him right now. Shot clock at eight for Juwan McLeod. A screen by Bennett Cook. Five to shoot. McLeod turned the corner and kicks. Morgan on a three. It's too strong. Kept alive by Clint Carlson and backed out by Ashton. Nice play by Carlson. 
one of seven for Morgan, and he's shaking his head. That is not good body language right now for him. Win today at Illinois State clinches a share of the regular season title in the Missouri Valley with Wichita State. The Shockers have already clinched their share with a win earlier today against Missouri State. And Clint Carlson drills a three. That's normally not his thing, but he's made two in the game. Wichita State won that game, 86-67. They made 11 threes. It's only a two for Carlson, so a three-point game. And now Phil Fain in the lane lifts and buries one. I like that, Fain in the lane. <laughs> We're going to hear some more alliterations from Mr. Stover <laughs> as we go along here. Well, his scoring is nearly 10 a game, and his rebounding is seventh in the conference. Fain, a sophomore, has had a really nice season. Baseline jumper for Ashton won't go, rebounded by Paris Lee. Lee floats it up and in. Oh, nice, huh? Those are tough shots. Lee, even though he wasn't spectacular in the first half, ended up having seven points, four boards, a couple of steals. Largest lead of the game at seven for Illinois State as Cook gets shoved to the floor by Deontay Hawkins, and that's his third foul. Harris Lee on the move. Going to his right, left-handed player. Very tough play. Uses the screen beautifully. Nice little fade. He's been around a long time. He's used to winning. Good leader. You can see him directing here, everybody defensively on the out-of-bounds play. Cook got foul trouble in the first half for the Panthers. Only played 13 minutes. He's their chief inside guy, number 25. So he's got two fouls. Hawkins just committed his third for the Redbirds. And so he sits on the bench. Ashton with 10 to shoot, and now Carlson. Near steal by Clayton. McIntosh all over Carlson, four to shoot. Jeremy Morgan, short, rebounded by Clayton. Well challenged by Paris Lee. And now Fane in the lane again, scores it. <laughs> you got me going on that, Bob. I like it. Well, Fane has to take more responsibility with Hawkins out of the game. Hawkins averages 15 and 7. With him out, McIntosh and Fane have to take care of business. That large bid just didn't do enough, I guess, in, in the non-conference. That said, we feel like if they win here today and make a deep run at Arch Madness, it won't matter if they lose the title game. Got 24 wins already. They are the fourth best defensive team in the nation. Field goal percentage. Take a look at this defense. A trap and a rotation. Nobody's open. Wow, that was spectacular. Shot clock at three for Juwan McLeod. Down the lane, wild shot up. No, but gets bailed out by a foul with one second. Despite this foul, take a look at this D. Watch the double team and the rotation to the corner. The cross court pass available, but Lee is there. And then as the shot clock winds down, a little drive to the basket, they bail him out, as you said. But that is typical Illinois State team defense. They are spectacular. Holding people to 37% from the field. Won 17 out of 18 games. Haven't. Only one loss in January and February. Those are, that's a lot of good stuff, it's, right? It's amazing. Here's here's the one negative. They've never won in this building, Bob, and we mentioned it in the first half. Yes. 0-10. Oh and and yeah. And oh they and in fact, they haven't won in Cedar Falls since 2004. Well, that guy's got a lot to do with that because he's been here for 11 years, and they've been good most of the time. David Injai out to Paris Lee. McLeod defends. Lee alley -oop Injai, and Injai got pushed on the way in. That was a slip screen play where the guy, Injai, comes in as if he's going to set the screen for Lee, but doesn't. And while his man is helping, he's cutting to the basket. I know that's a little complicated, but there it is right there. Help by Cook. Lob available, and that was going to be a dunk. And it was a foul on Carlson, his second. Now McIntosh going to work on Carlson. He's strong. Tony Wills way off on a three. Inchat tried to save it. It's out of bounds to Northern Iowa. Good D that time by the Panthers. We've been praising Illinois State. 
Wills shoots an air ball. They force him to do something he's not used to doing. Well, Bob, to that point, Northern Iowa last 12 games, opponents scoring just 59.7 points per game and shooting just 39%. Yeah, so, and, and they had to improve defensively because the offense was really not up to their standards. But the offense today has been pretty good. If UNI wins today, they finish conference with a winning record after starting 0-5 in the league. Only other team in Missouri Valley history to do that, Oklahoma in 1924-25. Wow. Did you call that game? Uh, <laughs> McIntosh is off the mark on a three, and here comes Northern Iowa trailing by eight, four minutes into this second half. They haven't scored a basket since the 1908 mark. Red jerseys everywhere. Ben Jacobson wants movement. Anytime you hold the ball too long against this group, you're not going to get a good shot. And Bennett Cook takes the lob and scores. Little high-low action. First one of the day. They could go there more. Here comes Lee. Now DJ Clayton works on Morgan. Sean Evans, seven to shoot. Lee, too strong. Cook gets hammered by McIntosh on the rebound. Watch the high-low action, the high post to the low post. Deontay Hawkins has been on the bench with three for quite a while. He's their leading scorer. And Northern Iowa doing a reputable job scoring in the paint, and that is normally not their thing. So here we are with a six-point Illinois State advantage. A win, and they share the regular season title with Wichita State, their first Valley title since 1998. They got to get it done here today on the road. Cook in the lane against the double, and he took the extra step. Hawkins is back in, Brent. So Muller has taken a chance here, and he has to take a chance. This guy's one of his best players, if not his best player. He's got three fouls, but I would not put him on Cook because Cook has very good footwork in the lane. I would put Njai on Cook. Njai over to Evans. Two point guards in the game, Evans and Lee. I like this also. They've been productive in this game. Njai screams for Lee. Paris kicks, corner, Evans, short, Evans got his own rebound, Lee on a three, got it! How about those two point guards, huh? Just mentioned it. Lee to Evans, miss. Evans to Lee, make. And now Lee has a dozen, the lead back to nine. Jawan McLeod, short on a three, rebounded by Inja. Way too early in the shot clock for me. Whistle blows offensive away from the ball. This could be Hawkins. It is, and it's his fourth, Bob. So that's that's a major development here. Muller took a chance by putting him back in the game. He did not get a defensive foul. He got an offensive foul. Averages 15 and 7 a game. Deontay Hawkins going to the bench. Now, normally, you do certain things and substitution patterns in a normal game. This is not a normal game. This is a game for them to be tied for the Missouri Valley Championship. So, Hawkins may come in sooner in a game like this than later. They would also get the one seed in Arch Madness over Wichita State because of RPI. Their RPI right now is nine better than the Shockers in a win over Northern Iowa would definitely be better than the Shockers win over Missouri State earlier today. The RPI comes out on Sunday, so we would have to wait till tomorrow to find out for sure. But yes, Illinois State, there's the RPI at the bottom, would indeed have the better RPI if they win this game and get the one seed in St. Louis. And now a foul on the drive on Northern Iowa. And I should add to that, that the RPI usage for seeding in a tournament that's up to the conference it has nothing to do with the ncaa the conference can decide how they break ties lots of conferences break ties by complicated formulas what your one loss was against the particular team what your one loss is against the top two or three teams there's all different ways of doing that but the missouri valley decides to use the rpi 
and this is just for seeding in the Missouri Valley. It has nothing to do with the NCAA tournament at large situation. Wichita State on their home floor drilled Illinois State just a couple of weeks after the Redbirds on their home floor by 41. By, yeah, yeah, yeah. Illinois State won their game over the Shockers by 14. <laughs> Pretty impressive, but reversed the two numbers, and that's what the Shockers did. And we could see them again in the Valley title game. Wichita State, I, I am telling you, that guy does an unbelievable job. And, and you know, with, with them, they lose two guys to the NBA who people didn't think would play in the NBA, Van Fleet and Ron Baker. And they're still dominating. They're winning by 30 points a game at home this year. We will have the semifinals next Saturday right here on CBS Sports Network. Arch Madness in St. Louis. Then the final on Sunday on CBS. Here's Haldeman. Five to shoot. Morgan. Three. In the face of Tony Wills, way short. And a rebound as Paris Lee comes out of there. Off day on senior day for Morgan. Take away by Jordan Ashton. Northern Iowa trailing by 10, their largest deficit of the afternoon. Paris Lee stopped that fast break by himself. What a terrific play he just made. Haldeman for Rhodes. Rhodes with eight to shoot, Haldeman deep one. Too strong and a rebound for Phil Fade. You can see Dan Muller on the side directing guys. He wants McIntosh over on the other side of the floor. Tony Wills rounds out. Rhodes skies for the long rebound. Morgan has missed nine straight shots. The team has gone scoreless Northern Iowa in the last four minutes. It'll stay at this end, but the Panthers down by 10 to that man. Sounds like that's an objective measurement, but it's really not because a team like Illinois State doesn't get an opportunity to play as many games against top 50 teams because they're not in their, in their league. So they're one and one. Another team could win two, but they had seven chances to get those two, right? Yep, Bennett Cook banks it in and into that point, Bob. You gotta be on your game. You gotta get those signature wins in the non-conference in November and December. You don't really get a chance to round into form when exactly. you're a team like Illinois State and Wichita State. You sound like a coach talking. <laughs> it is feel like we've had a few conversations with these guys in our travels the last few months. Well, it's a good point because, you know, your team at the beginning of your year is not the same thing as your team in January and February. Off day for Jeremy Morgan right now. That does not mean that he won't play great in the last 10 minutes of the game because he's certainly capable of that. Evans defended by Rhodes. Shot clock at seven. Double team has been effective. Three to shoot. Fall away. McIntosh is in. That's more effective. They double teamed him. And in the double team, he read it beautifully and hit a fadeaway before he made a cross-court pass. He leads all scores with 13. Paris Lee has 12. Paris Lee on the bench resting. Corner, rhythm three. Got it! Jordan Ashton. He's been hot in this game. And that's a career high. Four made threes for him. Something crazy has to happen to beat a 16 and one team. There's another turnover back to the Panthers. Jordan Ashton measures this one. Beautiful cross-court pass by Carlson. He took a long time to get it off, but he's feeling it today. He leads the Panthers with 12 points on four of eight, four of five from downtown. Wow. As a team, they are now six of 19, the Panthers on threes. They trail by seven as we go under 10 minutes. Enjai on Cook inside. It's getting physical. And there's the whistle. Enjai's got a big smile, Brent, because he feels like Cook led the official astray on that particular play. Cook fell down when they were going hip to hip. They're getting a little bit of a talking to right here. That's uh, two fouls on Enjai, the seven foot sophomore from Seneca.
can look at it inside again. They're getting hooked up right here. It leaves Rhodes wide open. And he drills it. It was 40 to 30 a minute ago. 8 to 2 run by the home team. Time for poise. Evans got it. How big was that? That was gigantic. Are you kidding me? What a great play. The two point guards together have combined to make great plays. He's got nine. He's drilled three threes. Muller's team is six and 19 at the arc. They stop an 8-2 run with that three to put the lead back to seven. Hawkins is back in, playing with four. Or rather, yeah, Hawkins is back in for Illinois State here. Well, that's significant. And like I said before, typically you would not put Hawkins back into the game in a situation like this. But because this game is so important and vital, you got to preserve your seven-point lead right here. And that's why he's in the game early. Typically, you would let him stay on the bench until about four or five minutes left in the game. He's got the four fouls. He's in there defending on Cook, who draws a triple. Look and at it's that! A takeaway by Lee. Ahead for Evans, who just hit the big three, and he's going to pump the brakes. I cannot believe Lee just did that. Holy mackerel! I hope we have that because I want people to see this one. I promise you. He leads the conference in steals, and we've seen that on display today. Now Hawkins in the lane. Tough move. Wouldn't go. Fane fighting for the rebound, but it's pulled away by the Panthers. Good strength by Cook on that one. 2 3 zone. Hawkins is in the middle. They will try to get it inside to draw his fifth. Carlson on the high post is effective. There's Cook. That's where they want it. Back out to Morgan. Four to shoot Morgan. Down to two. Rhodes. Short. Rebounded by Hawkins. They probed the inside to get the foul on Hawkins. They passed it back out, but they didn't get a clean shot. Lee off the bounce. Wills, three. You pass. How about the dish by Paris Lee? Wills is not a great three-point shooter, but he's a competitor. And the lead is back to 10. Cook got Hawkins in the air, draws the triple, tied up by Wills. And it's a foul on Illinois State as we go to the under eight timeout. He steals it. He's fading out of bounds and gets it inbounds before his feet touch it to the ground. Well, he's only got two steals in the game officially. I think he's got four, and I'm going to say <laughs> that um, we have a new category. We're going to call them disruptions. They did. He's got six disruptions. I know for a fact, Bob, they didn't, that play we just showed, they didn't give him a steal on that. <laughs> so only two officially, but the Bob Wenzel scorebook has four. Turn around in the lane. Bennett Cook knocks it down, and that stops. A 6-0 Redbird run. Hawkins was hesitant to challenge him. We talked to Dan Muller before the game, and he told us with key players, he tells them, better to give up a basket than to get that foul. Yeah, Hawkins playing with four fouls down the stretch here. Lee on Rhodes. Nice double team. Shot clock at eight. Keyshawn Evans hit a big one a moment ago. Off the bounce this time, Evans. Love it when they're both in. It gives them a guy who can create his own shot. And he's made clutch threes. Now he makes a clutch drive to the basket. He's in double figures with 11. Lee has 12, McIntosh 13. And a good combination and formula here this afternoon on the road. Jeremy Morgan is one for 10 from the field. His only make was inside the first couple of minutes of the game. A miss in the lane, one and done for the Panthers. The fact that they're within 10 and he's one for 10 really is a very interesting situation. I'm waiting for him to come alive in the late game. We've seen that a few times. Indeed. Harris Lee. And now it's Phil Payne. 
and Deontay Hawkins and Keyshawn Evans with the shot clock at five. Evans a deep one, got it again. Keyshawn Evans, you have got to be kidding me. What a smile on his face. A little tap by Paris Lee. Largest lead of the game at 13. Evans has 14. Morgan tries to answer. It's too strong. Tapped out to Ashton. Time to play. Carlson. Ashton. Short. And a rebound for Paris Lee. Paris Lee's got the intelligence thing going here. Hawkins fade down the lane, fouled by Morgan, and he's at the line. Well, Keyshawn Evans is a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and he backs this one up, and we are in Cedar Falls, Iowa, but this is deep. Casey's wow. general. <laughs> yeah. You gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern on CBS, don't miss the American as the toughest competitors in the world will ride away with the rodeo's biggest one-day payout, the B&W Trailer Hitches, the American, presented by Kubota, only on CBS Sports. These are the types of game situations where Illinois State's got that veteran look. Well, if they can sneak in, no matter how it is, if they win the Valley Championship next weekend, if they get an at-large, he could do damage in the NCAA tournament. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Last year, you and I did damage. Beat Texas, should have beaten Texas A&M. Wichita State wins a game in the NCAA. There's been a history of it for sure. The lead is 14, the largest of the game. The Redbirds on a 12-2 run, including eight by Evans during that span. Carlson can't connect. And here come the Redbirds, slowing it down with 419 remaining. There are no bodies on the offensive glass for you and I right now. I think part of it is fatigue, but they're not athletic enough to stay with them for 40 minutes. There's the run over the last five minutes. They've taken a stranglehold, and Paris Lee adds to it. Make that 14 to 2, not 12 to 2. And now Lee and Evans each with 14. So you mentioned you love that guard combination. They've combined for 28. Nice. Which is exactly half of Illinois State's points. Indeed. And a takeaway by Tony Wills. A win clinches a share for the Missouri Valley regular season title with Wichita State. The Shockers winning earlier today. Jordan Ashton, the takeaway, takes it in and gets fouled, which gets us, Bob, to the under four at Illinois State, leading by 16. One of my favorite players. You got to admire him, right? I mean, three weeks ago, he's played. He's back. He's not up to 100% for sure. But by the time the NCAA tournament starts, he will be. And uh, he has shown a lot of good stuff out here today. Length of the floor, dunk, turnaround jumpers, threes. Good player. It's amazing how quickly Illinois State put a stranglehold on this game. I mean, it was down to four at, at 42-38, and then absolutely things have, have changed on a dime. I like your uh, verbiage there, stranglehold, because that's exactly how they play. They're fourth in the nation in field goal percentage defense, and in the second half, Northern Iowa is shooting 33%. And, of course, uh, Ann Muller's team, very efficient. And they only do it in more than one way. I mean, they play man, they play zone. They play 2-2-1 two, two, press. They trap. Sometimes they don't. They double team in the paint. I mean, they, they do a lot of very good fundamental things combined with their athleticism and Paris Lee's steal ability. They are a lockdown team. So they are on fire. It'll be 17 of their last 18 games that they've won. Wichita State is on fire. We wouldn't be shocked at all. In fact, we would expect these two to match up in the title game of the Valley. And you and I feel like at that point, regardless of who wins that game, the loser would get an at-large into the big dance. McIntosh, the spin and the score and the icing on the cake in this one. Boy, uh, he had that ball the entire shot clock. The rest of the guys cleared out. 
Morgan, one for 11. He's their star player. Leads them in everything. Not leading them today. Carlson turnaround. Battles out. Pulled down by Hawkins. So just to put this all in perspective, Bob, this will be 25 regular season wins for the Redbirds. The most in school history. 17-1, their best ever conference. Most in regular season school history. 17-1, their first regular season title. They'll share it with Wichita State, but first one since 1998. And they will, they're all but assured the one seed at Arch Madness in St. Louis next weekend because their RPI, when it comes out tomorrow, Again, it, it would be impossible for it not to be better than Wichita State. So they would get the one seed at the Valley Tournament. Wichita State would be the two. And they have played Wichita State twice this year. In the Missouri Valley, you play everyone twice, which I love. They won the first game at their place. McIntosh played. They lost by 41. The next time they played against Wichita State, McIntosh did not play. That was during the time that he had been injured and uh, recovering from his knee surgery. So it will be very, very interesting on a neutral floor if these two teams play against one another in the finals. And that final is next Sunday on CBS. You and I will be calling the semifinals on Saturday on CBS Sports Network. And on top of everything, the Redbirds had never won in this building. They've been 0-10 and, and hadn't won in Cedar Falls since 04. And that is going to be erased uh, right here today. So a lot of history in the making in, in what you're enumerating here. And these guys are tough mentally, tough physically. They're deep enough. They're a team that you enjoy watching. Now, with Northern Iowa losing this, they still could get the three seed if Southern Illinois beats Loyola today. So if Southern Illinois beats Loyola, you and I is the three seed, otherwise they're the four. So then it becomes the question, who do you want to face? <laughs> you want to face Wichita State or Northern Iowa? There's Jordan Ashton, one of the seniors on this team, came as a graduate transfer. Here on senior day, but either way, Northern Iowa, for the ninth straight year, it's a top four finish in the Valley. Now, they're going to close here with three straight losses, but after they started 0-5 in the Valley, to finish 9-9, nine and nine, still a pretty solid job, and finish in the top four regardless. So nice job by Jacobson's guys. Yes, and they certainly improved during the course of the second part of the season, dramatically. It's just unfortunate that on senior day, Jeremy Morgan had one of his worst performances of his career in this game. One for 11 for Morgan, and there's a three for Hawkins. And let the party begin. It's going to be the share of the Missouri Valley regular season crown for the Redbirds, and they're going to finish 17 and 1 in conference and 25 and 5 in the regular season. Tough day for that guy. What a career. Part of two NCAA tournaments the last two seasons, a big part of those tournaments. And then there's Lee going to the other bench with 14 on 5 of 10. He and Evans were phenomenal in the backcourt. And Justin Dahl in for Northern Iowa. So the Panthers will finish the regular season 14 and 15, 9 and 9 in the Valley in three straight losses. The Redbirds will get their sixth straight win. Dan's team have now won 18 of their last 19 games. You get used to winning, my friend. Haldeman's three is off, rebounded by Thompson. 63 42, final 40 seconds. Bubble action today and tonight on CBS Sports Network, and this just the start of it. Illinois State certainly made another statement that they belong in the big dance right here this afternoon on the road as Hine misfires on a free. Next up, Providence and Marquette do battle. Those two teams on the bubble. And Nevada later on tonight. Yeah. Also cutting for the Mountain West regular season title. Tied with Colorado State in the regular season out there in the Mountain West. And then we got Colorado State and E.D. Eastern. So, good day. March to March on CBS Sports Network, presented by California Almonds. And Illinois State 
shares the regular season title in the Valley with Wichita State, their first regular season conference.